Hello students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the third module, Reactive Chemistry. This is video number one on the indicators of a chemical change. When we're looking at changes in chemistry, there are two types of changes that we need to worry about. Those two types of changes are physical change and chemical change. In chemistry, the one that we're most commonly focusing on are chemical changes. But just to quickly review, and I'm sure this is not brand new for most of you, um, physical changes are changes of state. So they involve things like melting or boiling, uh, condensing and so on, or where we have uh, particular metals in uh, as an example that are malleable so therefore we can change their shape what happens is that the physical properties uh, don't change and because the physical properties don't change we have uh, what's called a change of a, a physical change so a change of state a change of shape something that's usually fairly easily reversible and also something that's often low energy so the amount of energy required in order to do this is comparatively low now there are um, different types of bonding that we've seen before that does mean that some of the changes of state can still require some significantly high input of heat energy but as a general rule, in a comparison between physical and chemical changes, the relative amounts of energy are lower for physical change. So chemical change, on the other hand, is where we have a new substance forming. So we have to have bonds uh, being broken, and these are always chemical bonds which must be broken. It's possible that we can have physical forces, uh, hydrogen bonding, van der Waals forces or dispersion forces, um, or dipole-dipole interactions that are actually breaking in our change of state. Now, it's also possible that we can have chemical bonds like ionic, uh, metallic, covalent bonds also breaking um, in our changes of state, but chemical bonds must be broken for a chemical change. And of course, we must also have the formation of new bonds. So new substances are formed with new bonding arrangements these chemical changes are not easily reversed they tend to require a much higher energy input and they can be associated with color change or state changes you can see the kind of the little fizzing that's going on here production of uh, those bubbles are indicative of a gas they don't tell us what gas it is we must test for that gas it could be hydrogen with a pop test, it could be oxygen if it relights a glowing splint. We may even bubble it through some lime water to see if it's carbon dioxide. The bubbles will always tell you that a gas is present, but they won't necessarily tell you what that gas is, unless you're aware of the, um, the compound that is being decomposed or the compounds that are being added together in order to produce whatever this gas may be. To give you an example, let's have a little bit of a look at the difference between boiling and electrolysis. So boiling of water is a physical change. It simply involves the conversion of liquid water into gaseous water. So what's happening here is we are breaking um, hydrogen bonds between molecules. So the individual water molecules are still present, they're still intact, but we just basically move them away from each other. So they now move independently, which is our characteristic of gases. We need to add heat energy. So if we're going to boil this, we know that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees C. And so therefore, we know that we're going to have to heat, put a lot of heat energy in in order to get that water to uh, convert into water gas or water vapour. The product in this case is the same as the reactant. So the water that's produced is the same chemical um, compound as the one that we started with. There's been no change, just a change in the form or state. And while we will get bubbles, so the bubbles do indicate that we have a gas produced. When we test those bubbles, we know that they are not hydrogen or oxygen. They are simply water that is now in its gas state. If we compare that with electrolysis, electrolysis is a chemical change. And you can see we have two new substances that were not present initially, now part of our products. 
both hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Not only that, the ratio here of two to one is also indicative of the um, way that they combine together to form water. This requires electrical energy, which is a higher input of energy than is required in the heat change uh, of state of water. Two new substances in this case are formed, hydrogen and oxygen, and we can test for these gases in order to ensure that they are um, hydrogen and oxygen and not just water that's been turned into a gas. So this is just a little starting point for you to start focusing in on exactly what chemical changes are and we will have a look at these in a little bit more detail in future videos. Thanks for watching.